I love like a dramatic, nasty swoop, okay? No crotch fruit for me. If I don't make it happen for myself, who will? It's no one else's job to make it happen for me but me. If you ever went to a COVID funeral, you'd know. I ain't about to be fighting with no blush. Pamela here welcome back to my channel but as you can tell by the title of this video we're gonna do a really cute and fun chit chat get ready with me I'm gonna do my best to make it a three-in-one so y'all can see me do my hair of course my makeup and I'll show y'all the outfit I'm going to a wedding today shout out to Junior and Lex if you're watching this love you guys I'm very excited for you too um but yeah let's go ahead and get started my skin is, sk it looks gorgeous right now. And it's actually cloudy outside, so it's not really a sun glow. Sidebar, I hope it does not rain on these people's wedding day. Anywho, um, what was I gonna say? Um, I think I might, I'm trying to think. I think I'm gonna do my hair first because I always like lay my edges first and then do my makeup so that all of that can like set. So, what I'm thinking, oh, let's do this side. Um, when I tried on my dress, it's like a V-neck. I wouldn't really call it a sweetheart neckline. It's like a V-neck situation. And I think I might need a little touch up or something for my braids here soon, but anywho. Um, it's like a V-neck situation. So when I tried it on, um, I thought I wanted my hair down, but I think I'm just gonna have it up out of my face. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. So, I do know I want to swoop. If you know, you know, I love me a swoop moment. Nice little deep swoop. So what I realized is like, I'm doing a bun. With a bun, it's better to use like these scrunchies that are a little looser than these because these just are more, uh, give you more tension. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a nice little up situation. That's cute. Very, very cute. All right. And then once I put my hair up, I loosen the braids around my edges, like around the perimeter of my head, because you know, that's the most, um, I guess, fragile or sensitive part of the scalp. And again, like I, my scalp is very sensitive to tension, which is part of why I love knotless braids now, because you know, very little tension. Because my hair is shorter in the back, of course, because um, the way my hair grows out, they had to do regular in the back and I could feel the difference between that and the the knotless braids for sure. So, all right, so what are we doing with this swoop? I love like a dramatic, nasty swoop, okay? <laughs> Yo, my skin is really skinning. I have this like pimple here. I don't know where it came from. I've been getting breakouts lately. I don't know if it's a hormonal thing because I'm not a pimple girl. I'm not like, I don't have natural, like my skin doesn't do the, like some people's skin is naturally prone to breakouts. Mine isn't pimple or So whenever I get a pimple, it's like, what you doing, boo? What's going on? Okay. So, all right, gonna wrap that around. And then tuck in the end. If you're wondering um, who did my braids, I got these like three weeks ago, but um, I like scratch a lot. I've been greasing my scalp, so. But yeah, so if you're wondering who do my braids, I go to my Africans on Ocean Child. I've been going to the African aunties and they have yet to steer me wrong. I do wash my hair though in apple, the, my braiding hair, in apple cider vinegar because my scalp is just super sensitive. Um, and last summer I didn't and I paid the price. My scalp paid the price. I already got a sensitive scalp. I'm already a flaky girl. Even when my real hair is out, like, relax, I'm a flaky girl. So all of that was just not, not fun. Anywho, so last time I wore a bun, I realized it kind of, like, fell out because it didn't really have any structure to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to braid this hair before I um, put it into a bun. Actually, I'm going to twist it. I kind of tried, I tested, tested this out a little bit yesterday. And so I'm gonna twist it and then I'll put it into a bun and that it'll really like stay. Um, yeah, it adds a little dimension to it. It's a little cute, you know, 
I find with braids, I tend to be basic and like not do too many styles. So I'm like, you know, I'll do a little something, something different. So I'm gonna twist this side. There's like no method to this. I, you know, y'all know I'm not a hairstylist, but I will do a little one too. Oh, I forgot to have a mirror on the side. I will do a little one too when I need to. It's giving hippie long stocking. Anywho, so I'm literally just gonna, I don't even, I'm looking at my, oh shoot. I'm looking at my side mirror. So I twisted that one way, then I'll bring this one around the other way. I feel like this is not as sturdy as it could be. Yeah, this is not as sturdy as it could be because you see I'm already having like loose pieces. You know what I'm gonna do? So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna take all this down. I'm gonna put the swoop up if, with the ponytail and I'll be right back. That's as good as we're gonna get. <laughs> um, I see a little couple, feel a couple of braids that are a little loose. So I'm just gonna throw some of these. What are they called? I call these like the wide open pins. Um, so I'm gonna do that. It's just this little bang part that's like not like I want it to stay in place, you know. Um, but you know what? This is fine. It's fine. Okay. Sidebar, if you're in New York or you're going to be in New York soon, if you haven't seen the Jay-Z exhibit, you should go see it. Random plug. All right, so now we're just going to do my edges. I'm using Style Factor Edge Boost and my very dirty uh, edge brush, but we all have a dirty edge brush in our houses right now, I'm sure. So y'all will be okay. And then I love this mousse. It says it's for relaxed hair and clearly I have relaxed hair. So I use it for the flyaways, you know, to make everything look, you know, nice and shiny when I have braids. And then um, when my hair is out and, um, you know, with my relaxer, it works too. That one's about to be done. So I got another one. And then I have just some oil sheen spray. I just chose whichever one looked cute or was cheaper. So I'm trying out a new primer for all over my face. I don't know that I want to try it on my eyebrows. Um, Cause I don't know how it's going to do with my eyebrows. And I don't have time to experiment with my eyebrows today. Um, I really should have tested out this primer before, but um, I just didn't have a chance to. And I don't really do my makeup that often anymore. Fun fact, I used to be a makeup artist. But I was really excited. I've been excited all summer to do my makeup for this. Um, Cause it's just been a while. I even like weeks ago, I washed, made sure all my makeup brushes were clean. And like I have a bajillion, I have more makeup brushes than the average person, of course, because I used to be a makeup artist. But ciao. I was very excited. I'm still excited about this. So this is my NYX Angel Veil Primer. Um, and then I'm gonna put on my um, uh, Morphe Translucent Powder. Um, this is very, very comparable to the Laura Mercier um, Translucent Powder. 
I think the next one I want to try is the Patrick Star one size. I've heard nothing but good things about Patrick Star's line. Of course, it's sold out everywhere most of the time, but I definitely, if I come across it, I definitely want to try it one of these days. So now we're at the point where it's going to start looking crazy before it starts looking better. <laughs> so I'm going to, oh man, I don't have my Mario Badescu Rose Water Spray. I sprayed that before I came on camera. But since I don't have that next to me, I don't feel like getting up. I'm going to use my Morphe um, Continual Setting Mist. Love this stuff. So that's the prep for my eyebrows. Gonna let that, while that's doing what it needs to do, I'm gonna go ahead to these edges. I don't remember the last time like I did the chit chat get ready with me with y'all. It's been a while. Last time I did the chit chat get ready with me, I might have been in my parents' house, which is a crazy thought. It was a very long time ago. Well, it feels like a very long time ago. Well, All right, so I just, let me see. I hope this doesn't mess up my little banging situation. But if it does, oh well. And what I do is I don't like pull the brush into the braids itself. I'll brush and then my finger will bring the product into the braids. Just so less buildup, less frizziness. It makes sense to me. So let me try to put this little bang back down. Jesus. <laughs> Actually, okay, this is kind of a look. Well, I like the top part, but the bottom part would need to come down a little bit more. This is a little, cute, a little bit of a look, you know? I like this part. Let me see. How about we just leave it as is for now? Let me stop fidgeting. Let's leave it as is for now. Okay. So spray my face again. I feel like my y'all know I have very, very, very oily skin. I'm already looking shiny and I ain't did nothing today. Yeah. So <laughs> um the base is gonna be the key. Yeah. Um when I went and got this primer from Ulta, it's the elf power grip primer when i went and got that from ulta i was like yeah i usually do like mix it with like a powder or like um another primer and they were like they don't know how we do with the powder because it's like a grippy primer so we are gonna see okay but this mario badescu rose water spray i love it holds me down yeah fun fact usher my man my man my man also uses it go check out his skin routine on youtube okay all right so <laughs> all right is the cover for that okay so edges are done and what i do is i'll put mousse over all of that so it'll be all over my hair and all over the edges i find that it just helps it stay a little bit longer this is like it usually gets bigger than this but this is like the, the ending of this bottle i don't always put this much but you know i'm going to a wedding i'm going to be there for a while pictures all of that so do that also gonna put it in the back and um, mousse is also good for like flyaways so sometimes you just you know inevitably get some flyaways This will help everything, especially in the back, be nice and smooth. Put the leftover on my beautiful braided bun. Then we'll take my handy dandy head tie. Um, actually, put a little bit of oil sheen on it. I might put a little oil sheen on it when I take it off too, but sometimes I forget, especially like by the time I take the head tie off, I'll be rushing and stuff. So put that on now. Okay. So, that's gonna be that. Lovely. All right. Now let's get started on this face. Give me one second, let me check the time. And I wanted to talk to y'all, cause I, y'all know, clearly I turned 25, um, December 31st, Capricorn Gang stand up, you know, 
the best sign there is are you with your mama <laughs> um but yeah like i just turned not oh, just i'm actually closer to 26 than to 25 because today is august 4th and that is a crazy thought like because my birthday is december 31st my year is the, my personal year is the calendar year like if you're born in august your personal year is just getting started and now mine is winding down and it's kind of crazy um it's just really crazy to think about honestly um but yeah like i can't believe i'm already on like like literally i'm low-key almost 26 like it's month eight there's only four more months until i turn 26 and i don't even like to think about that i didn't even like to think about turning 25 because i'm the usually the youngest in my friend group um typically well there's like one or two people that are younger than me in my friend group but um for the most part i'm one of the youngest in my friend group and um i'm using the morphe brow definer i think it's called in cold in the color cold brew um but yeah like um i'm the please hold let me do my eyebrows and come back y'all know i know good and well i should not be trying to do my eyebrows while talking be please hold <laughs> Um, yeah, but yeah, as I was saying, turning, um, 25, like, I feel like it's been a big adjustment for me simply because I feel like, I feel like my early 20s lasted a very long time. Like, I feel like I was in my young adult era for a very long time. Like, I was a young, in, I was, I turned, of course, 20 when I was in college, graduated at 21. Um, yeah, turned 20 when I was in college, graduated at 21, and then, you know, I moved to Chicago, then I moved back home, then I lost my grandmother's, and, you know, you know, was working to get out of my parent. like, all of these things were happening, um, at once, not at once, but, like, in my early 20s, and I feel like, you know, once I turned 25, I'm like, I'm not in my early 20s anymore, I feel like when you're in your early 20s, when you're in your young adult era, I'm just wiping off. A little Vicks that I had on my nose because <laughs> my sinuses were acting up. Oh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I feel like when you're in your early 20s, you know, that's a time to, like, I want to say to BS, but, like, that's your excuse. Like, oh, I'm young. I'll figure it out. I'm young. Like, you know, and I'm not old. Don't get me wrong. But it's just a different level of responsibility because at the end of the day, at that point, I was inching to inching. I wasn't even thinking about turning 25. I was just moving towards turning 25, but I was literally enjoying the moment. Now I'm thinking about my age at all. At least until, especially after I turned 21, I was like, oh, I could drink legally now. It's up. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, as to where now it's like, okay, I'm not inching towards 25. I'm inching towards 30. And I'm not saying, not me about to put my foundation on without my uh, uh, primer, child. This whole day will go up in shambles, okay? Well, the flames, so I don't have no primer on. Child. Anywho. But yeah, like, it's not like I, um... Let me just put this on my hand. And that in the first couple pumps be a little weird. Um... Oh, this feels solid. Very solid. Oh, wow. But yeah, I'm inching towards 30, and I'm the type of person, like... I'm not gonna lie, like, there are things I want to do and have done before I turn 30, like, of course, like, I don't, I don't need kids before I turn 30, but, um, I would like to have a man, if I could be married, that would be great, um, you know, God willing, I would love to have kids in my 30s, so I'm really not, like, thinking about, like, I don't want kids right now, I'm very sure of that, I was very tacky, okay, I like that. But yeah, I don't want to have kids right now. I'm very sure of that. No crotch fruit for me. <laughs> and if you know me, you know I literally love kids. I will literally like, if you know me in real life, literally call me any day. I will literally come babysit your kids. I love kids at all ages. Newborn, toddler, elementary, freaking preteen. I love kids, you know? Um, But I don't want any of my own. <laughs> um, Right now. And I feel like, me in my 20s is like preparing for that because if i want to get married by 30 or at 30 um i'm very big on like i don't want to get married unless i know i'm ready for kids you know 
because you know inevitably y'all gonna be knocking on boots more than usual when you get married right um at least that's what i think <laughs> and you know i want to be responsible and be ready you know um for that so um with that being said there's just a lot of things like and i've been working on these things like in my early 20s especially getting close to 25 because i feel like i'm stabilizing a little bit at the moment um but it's just like damn like there's a lot that i need to get done and all the stuff that i said i wanted to do you know when i was younger this is literally the time to do it and that's kind of a scary thought um and again i know i don't i know i'm still young clearly but i'm very big on like I don't want to be a delinquent and people whenever I tell people that they're like have you met you you can never be a delinquent you know you're very on it like you're on your you know you're on your zoom so to speak they're like that can never be you but for me it's like I don't want to look up one day and be like what did I like I could have done more oh crap foundation done got on the table child that's fine I was gonna clean it afterwards anyway um but yeah like I don't ever want to like waste my time because again, like, I feel like now is the time to really get my stuff together, you know? I wanna be mentally happy. I mean, me mentally happy, yes, but I think mentally stable is probably the better word. Um, but yeah, I wanna be mentally stable. Now that I think about it, I don't need to put too much foundation on because it's gonna be summer tops. But yeah, like, I wanna be stable in all aspects. So like, mentally stable, emotionally, financially, and it's like i think i put a lot of foundation on a little too much foundation on um but yeah i want to be mentally emotionally financially stable you know and i'm in therapy of course i've been in therapy for what feels like forever but i've been in therapy for a while now like consistently for like a year and a half but like overall for maybe like two years um this is a lot of foundation way too much where's the beauty blender yep who we gonna be it's way too much foundation. The way the foundation is the way the foundation was coming out on the bottle that threw me off. I don't know why I don't want anything. Um, but yeah, it's important to me to be just stable and like be on it. And I feel like I'm in my, the way my life is going. I feel like if I don't make it happen for myself, who will? It's no one else's job to make it happen for me but me. So you know, I do feel I don't know if the word is pressure. Or maybe it's good pressure. I also will say, like, especially living on your own, um, I'm the type of person, like, when I need to kind of dig my heels in and go hard in the paint, I will. Like, even when I was in school, this is a lot of foundation, but I think it's actually coming off better on camera than in person. Um, but I'll make it work. Beauty Blender definitely helps, though. Because this is too much foundation. I'm not seeing why my neck is so dark. I don't know. Um. Yeah. So, anywho. Yeah. So it's a lot of like before I turn if before I turn thirty, I'm, I I want to be the person I want to be. I want to have the life I want a certain life. I want to have the life I see myself having at thirty when I get there. In order to do that, I have to work now, and I am. But um, it's scary, like being in your early 20s or when you've been young because i literally i'm 25 i've been young all my life right <laughs> so when you've been young for so long it's like you think of 30 like your life does not end at 30 but you think of like okay i want to have certain things by 30 um and i've always felt like that I, at first and it's funny like at first i was like when i was young 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 i thought get this y'all this is gonna make y'all laugh i wanted to like have be married i wanted to get engaged around my college graduation which was four years ago okay um i wanted to what did i want to do i wanted to be married by 25 and get this this is the kicker i wanted to have all of my kids popped out by 30 and i'm not talking about like one two kids I'm talking about if i have three or four kids i want them all to be out i wanted them all to be out by 30. now me being 25 very not very much not engaged and I didn't even date throughout college on purpose so I could focus. So clearly, you know, those um, plans changed. And, you know, rightfully so. God knows what he's doing because I had no business dating people in college, to be honest. And I was very tunnel vision, very focused. Um, but, yeah, like, 
that was the goal then so you never know as i go throughout the rest of my 20s um and it's crazy like i have i feel like i have more of my 20s behind me than in front of me and that's crazy um anywho but yeah so um focus through my nose um but yeah i feel like if i want to have these certain things done by 30 then I gotta get on my Zoom now. And I don't want the years to just pass and I haven't accomplished what I set out to accomplish, you know? It's a very hard, it, yeah, it's a very sobering thought um, when you're like, oh, I'm just fine doing what I'm doing now. But then I'm like, no, if I wanna accomplish these certain things by this certain time, I need to get on my Zoom. So that's just the moral of the story. I've been trying to, you know, get on my Zoom for lack of a better term. And for those who don't know what that means, get on your Zoom. It's like a TikTok. See, that's what the, the way the foundation, it's like it got on my robe, it got on the table. The way the foundation came out, that's why I have so much freaking foundation on my face because it just came out weird. I guess this is going right to the laundry after this. Anywho, um, but yeah, so it's very sober in thought, you know, to realize like, yo, if you don't want to look up and be unhappy with your life at 30, you got to get on your Zoom now. I don't even want to be like 29 thinking like, dang, like I'm not really doing what I need to do. Da, 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 da. Like, no, I want to be on my Zoom. And my early 20s were definitely a hell of a ride, especially like, um, what year was that? Maybe like from 22. Honestly, once I graduated college, it was kind of, a ro it was very much a roller coaster, very much a roller coaster. Um, yeah, it was very much a roller coaster. Um, you know, after, you know, after graduating college, but one thing I am thankful for is that I feel like I've seen a lot of life and gone through a lot of life, um, even just in my early twenties. And of course I have a whole life to live, but I feel like that is kind of helpful too. Cause I feel like, I don't know. I feel like sometimes the way the cookie crumbles is like, you have to go through certain stuff, blah, 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 before you can really handle the success that you're going to have. And I've definitely gone through a lot, you know? And I'm not saying like I'm exempt from going through anything else because it's quite literally life. Even the Bible says, one of the things that really brings me comfort actually is that the Bible says it rains on the just and on the unjust. So if things aren't going my way or they're just not going well, it doesn't necessarily mean I did something wrong. You know why? Because it rains on the just and on the unjust. Is this the right contour? No, this is too close to my skin tone. Love my black with foundation stick. Wish they still sold it in Rite Aid, but they don't. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that brings me comfort is that the Bible says it rains on the just and on the unjust. Like even Job, if you think about it, Job was righteous in the eyes of God. He was a servant of God. Um, I'm gonna take a light shade of my black and foundation stick. I haven't used this stuff in forever. Just to brighten up. Oh my concealer a little bit. Um but yeah it, the Bible says it rains on the just and on the unjust and that's something that brings me comfort, you know. But um yeah so it's rained a lot. <laughs> Especially over the last like two years, especially. No, what years? It's 2023, the last three years, three and a half years. It's been a lot, you know? It's been a very much whirlwind. And I feel like I'm still reeling from the fallout of that, you know? When you lose people that are close to you, you can't really get over it, but especially losing someone during COVID, I feel like if you lost someone during COVID, you need like a special type of therapy because COVID funerals and funeral arrangements were just traumatic. Like, um, not to go like too much into like my you know personal business, but if you ever like n don't see me at a funeral, it's because I'm traumatized from funerals. If you ever went to a COVID funeral, you'd know. Um, but yeah, I'm quite literally traumatized from funerals, which is why I don't go to them. Um, and some people get it, some people don't, and that's fine. But that's why I don't go to funerals because they quite I've quite literally been traumatized from having to go to a COVID funeral for my one of my grandmothers. So yeah there's that i don't know how we got there but yeah all of that happened in my 20s 
So I feel like, you know, some people might not lose someone close to them maybe until their thirties or maybe some people do earlier. Like I have friends who have lost who, you know, were supportive of me, of course, that lost people um, uh, younger, when they were younger, when we were younger. Um, and of course I didn't know what it was like for them, but um, they really, you know, just knowing that, you know, I'm not the only one that's gone through this was nice, but there are some people who haven't lost anyone close to them. And uh, when it does, God bless you, because it's gonna be a wild freaking ride. Okay. All that happened in my early 20s, you know? Um, so it's only a mess, you know, but thankfully, because it happened in my early 20s, you know, I, not that I know everything about like grief and loss or anything, but she's like, I'm like, you know what, at least I experienced it. <sighs> Crap, this brush has so much freaking foundation on it. Um, cause I, that's why I like using a foundation brush, but I just added more foundation by accident, trying to blend out my con contour into my foundation and concealer. Great. Oh. That's all my blemishes, not blemishes, all these whatever dark marks are covered. Um, but yeah, all that happened in my twenties. So, uh, needless to say. My 20s have been a wild ride, to say the least. Well, early 20s, I'll say. But one thing I will say, one thing I tell myself often, <laughs> maybe this is me being a little delulu, but I feel like a little delusion is good, you know, within reason. Like, not like criminal delusion, but like a little delusion, I feel like adds a little balance to life because I also feel like, yeah, I'm 25, I'm not a young adult anymore. I'm an adult adult, right? I feel like I've been a young adult, low-key teenager forever. And I just feel like I'm young and sexy. I can do anything. <laughs> and not just like, because I'm sexy, but it's like, no, I'm young and sexy. I can do anything. I can change my mind. You know, again, I have responsibilities now, right? Um, but um, it's like, yeah, I'm young and sexy. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. You know, even though I may get discouraged, I feel like at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm young and sexy. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. If I want something, I'm going to get it. I would say if I want somebody, I'm going to have them, but you know, that's not how people work. Because <laughs> that's the case, baby. I can tell you right now, he'll be my man. But you know, neither here nor there. Um, I feel like I'm kind of rambling. But is that the point I should check it right here? No. Anyway, probably should have asked on Instagram what y'all want to know. Um, but yeah, that is... How oh, that's going. Um, oh, this is cute. <sighs> and then let's see. Oh, I can also talk about things I've learned in my early 20s. Honestly, well, you know what? Last year was still technically still my early 20s. One thing I learned is like, I don't want to be friends with anybody that doesn't want to be friends with me. And I also realized, I mean, I knew this before, but as you, I personally feel, and one of the, I feel like I want one of my big focuses to be in therapy is, um, uh, kind of like how how I think now has been impacted by my childhood and how to reconcile the two so I don't always feel like a kid. Not that I feel like a kid, but I don't always revert to like ch childlike, not behavior, but it's kind of hard to explain, but like I'm very big on like, I don't want to be friends with anybody that doesn't want to be friends with me and thinking like that, not a bad thing, but it brings me back to when I was young. When I was in fifth grade, if you don't know, I was bullied a lot in fifth grade by this one girl. Um, but anywho, long story short, nobody likes their bully, right? So I had a bully um, in elementary school. I went to a school, it was an excellent school, like, you know, great education. My parents always call it like, it was a public school, but they were like, you know, it might all have been a private school because the education was that great, like, you know, the security guard knew all the kids' names, and um, I had great teachers, excellent education. And like, in fact, my elementary education set me up to be able to take my regents early um, when junior high, in junior high, by the time I got to junior high school, so that by the time I graduated, by the time I was like a junior, I think I was already done with my regents because I had taken them in junior high school. Low key, I feel like whatever regions they gave us in like seventh or eighth grade, I feel like they weren't as hard as the ones in high school. Maybe I'm bugging, but I'm glad I took them then. They didn't have to take my high school because I don't like math. I'm not a, I know because I don't like math. I'm just not, math is not my strong suit. Anywho, um, so great school, but I was bullied because I was one of three. Um, 
uh, black people in my class, classroom, period. I was one of three black people in the class, period. Um, and I was the only one. And like, I went to school with rich white kids. So like these girls are wearing Juicy Couture sweatsuits. Um, and like, you see how I have acrylic on my nails? They had acrylic on their nails. I remember they would get acrylic French tips wearing Uggs and all of this in, in uh, elementary school. And I wasn't, and clearly, you know, first of all, I'm Haitian, so you know Haitians don't play about sending their kids to school looking good. And of course my mother did not play about sending me to school looking good, right? But I just wasn't them. You know, I had short hair. Um, and it's like, part of that is part of the, my, the, my upbringing in that regard is part of the reason, like, I'm 25. It's just now, maybe like a year ago, or even I would say really even now, like between the last year, that's really when I started to love my hair. That, at my big age, is when I started loving my hair because I was always bullied for it. Like I was bullied for how I looked. I think they were also mad that I was smart. Like by the grace of God, I was always, I've always been a good student for the most part. Um, besides like a brief, you know, little situation I had in high school when I first got to high school, but anywho. Um, but yeah, like by the grace of God, I was always a good student. When I tell you I was teacher's pet, all the things, I look ridiculous right now but it's coming together, it's coming together. Anywho, um, but yeah, like I, here's my, oh, here we go. But yeah, by the grace of God, I was always, you know, a good student and everything, you know, all the things. Um, and I don't, I don't wanna say they were jealous, like I don't wanna think too much, too highly of myself, I guess, in that regard to be like, oh, they were jealous of me. I don't know that. And by they, I mean, it was really mainly one person that bullied me. Um, I just felt like I didn't really belong, you know? Um, and it was, that's just a hard pill to swallow for a kid, like feeling like you don't really belong, trying to fit in and like feeling like you're not really, you know, fitting in and all of that. Um, and I remember vividly how she felt. So now that I'm an adult, I realize like, wait a minute, I don't have to beg people to be my friends. I don't, or in my life, I should say, I don't have to do things I don't want to do so that someone's in my life. I'm not in fifth grade anymore. I'm not begging for friends. I'm confident, I'm secure. The people that are in my life wanna be in my life or I would think, you know, they wanna be in my life. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not the queen of England. God rest the queen. I'm not the queen of England by any means, but it's like, if someone wants to be in my life, they gonna be in my life. You know what I mean? And I feel like I'm a good friend, so I deserve good people in my life, you know? Um, and I'm not gonna beg. And I also realize, like, sometimes, not like you have to compartmentalize. I think that's the word. You have to compartmentalize people sometimes. And it's not even a bad thing. I think it's good for both you and them because one thing I have learned uh, about myself in my early twenties, and definitely realized, you know, I it came. I knew this. I think also in my teens too, but it really came to fruition in my early twenties. Is that. Um, I'm very averse to disappointment. I don't like getting disappointed. I don't like being let down. And I feel like to kind of avoid disappointment, I set my expectations very realistically, probably more than the average person, but it's like, I ain't finna sit up here crying. I ain't finna sit up here sad. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just accept what is and you know, kind of keep it moving. Cause again, I'm very averse to disappointment. I don't like being disappointed. I don't like being let down. Um, yeah, I just don't. I don't like being disappointed. I don't like being let down. Yeah, no, I don't. Um, where's my little lighter? But yeah, I don't like being disappointed. Don't like being let down. So I've learned to set my expectations very realistically. And I think honestly, it's actually kind of helped. Um, find out. It's gonna be good for a concealer. Um, and I'm using. I like to use a lighter powder to um, brush off the concealer or the powder that's on the concealer. I should say. And I'm gonna keep the powder under my eyes for now. Cause I'm gonna try to do a little one, two with the eyeshadow shadow. My email is this. That's why I still want emailing me. Um, and this is like a matte powder. Everything matte. I don't do dewy here. I, my, my skin provides enough dew, okay? Let me check the time, y'all. Please hold. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've learned, like, I don't have to beg anybody to be my friend. And it sounds maybe like a trivial thing, but little Pamela didn't know that. So 25-year-old Pamela knows that. 
and I kind of love that for me <laughs> like I know like you know what I don't have to beg anybody to be my friend I don't I don't have to because I found myself in a space where it was like am I begging people to be my friend am I pressing people to be my friend and I had to realize like Pamela you're not in fifth grade anymore you don't have to do that you know um and I'm not saying don't fight for your friendships I'm not saying that at all because if it's good people good people are hard to find we all know this you know stick to your people you know if it's worth it but I'm like you know I don't have to force anybody to be my friend simple as that and I will say though in that also same regard most of the people that I have in my life they've been in my life for a while like my majority of my life so one thing I think about y'all know I don't I'm not you know the end all be all for life for me is not in brooklyn love brooklyn it will always be home but i ain't finna spend the rest of my life here we're not doing that i'm not doing that um but with that it kind of uh i don't say terrifies me because it's really dramatic but like the thing that scares me is like trying to make new friends like when i lived in chicago i didn't really do the making friends thing and i should have um yeah i don't really do the making friends thing <clears throat> And I really should have. Um, and it just terrifies me because it's like people be crazy. You don't know who they are. And, you know, I, and it's kind of hard to start, I think, from scratch with friendships when you're used to all your friendships being so deep. You know what I mean? And again, friendships can get there. But I also like, you know, how some people like friendship, every friendship doesn't have to be so deep. Some people can just go out and kick it with. Very true. But I'm not going to hold you. Majority of my people are not just go out and kick it with people. It's like you can talk about the depths and the deeps, deepest things of life. Like we going below sea level. And I think I have to get used to the fact that like when it's a new friend, you might not go below sea level, you know, for the first few months, you know, or the first year. And like, if ever, it's okay to have friends that you can just kick it with and like have a good time with, you know, or just hang out with. Or talk about certain parts of life. Like, it's okay to have a friend you can talk to about, like, work stuff. But maybe you don't talk to them about, like, you know, your love life or whatever. Oh, hold on. I like what we got going on here. This is cute. Um, but, yeah. So, I'm still adjusting to that, honestly. And that's something I think about. That's one of the things that, one of the biggest things that terrifies me about the thought of, like, moving again. Because I want to do, I want to. If I move, I really am gonna, and it's gonna be like sustainable and like have longevity, I need a community, right? Like, it just is what it is. And a part of me is like, why do you need people that I'm like, Pamela, you know, you're like, be for real. I actually kind of like the I just like it is, so. I think I'm just gonna leave just like it is. I don't feel like dealing with um, any shimmer. Um, This is very, very cute. And I'm gonna put a little liner under my eyes. This is very, very cute. I like it very, very much. That reminds me of one of the babies I'll be watching on TikTok. Her name is Evie. She's literally the cutest. Um, I like it. Let's do it. And fun fact, I used to, when I was doing makeup makeup, I couldn't do this nude look with, like on the eyes for the life of me. Now, I'm randomly doing it. Without even thinking of when I really wanted to do it. It was hard. C'est la vie, I guess. Anywho, um, what was I gonna do? I was gonna do something. Okay, let's brush off the rest of this con uh, not concealer. The rest of this powder. Mm -mm -mm. Now I'm just pressing that powder in there. I think it's probably like 12 by now. Um, I feel like we had a good chit chat, chit chat, y'all. What do y'all think? And I'm excited about my dress. It's like a bright neon. Clearly, y'all gonna see it. <laughs> I'm very excited about my dress. It's gonna be very cute. It's very forgiving. I've been on Fashion Nova heavy lately. Shout out to my sis Sash because it was because of her. I had to shop on Fashion Nova for the longest. Like, I kind of recently started shopping on Fashion Nova. Like, first time I shopped on Fashion Nova was like two years ago, actually, now that I think about it. Um, and I got shoes for my brother's wedding. Y'all saw that. It was my LA travel vlog. Um, that was the first time I got that and like that high boots that I still have. Face powder. Yeah, I'll see face powder. Yeah. I'll do blush later. Um, and wherever you put a liquid, you gotta put a powder to set it, y'all. I'm just trying to you see that line of kind of like differentiation. Between 
sometimes the powder can do that. That's why I didn't keep the powder on for too long. Up here, that line of like differentiation between the concealer and <laughs> So now, I'm going to do some blush. I'm such a blush girl. I really love this um, peach blush. Oh, I'm not the double chin poking out here. Why is this not? It's, this color is the peach, and this one's like a sparkly one. I think I might do the peach. I just love like a peachy, orangey blush. It can freak it open. If this thing doesn't open, I'm gonna just use some eyeshadow because I ain't about to be fat. Oh, Jesus. All right, we're back. <laughs> oh, I ain't about to be fighting with no blush. And this is just a simple e.l.f. blush kit. Don't sleep on e.l.f.'s blushes, y'all. MAC has really pretty blushes, too. Shout out to my sister for my first MAC blush. Definitely zoned it from her <laughs> years ago. Um, I love the peach blush. I think I'm gonna add a pinch of this like sparkly mauve brush. Um, cause I think pink complements. Um, I'm wearing neon green, which I don't typically do actually, but I think it complements neon green nicely. So cute. The blush is blushing, guys. Uh, Okay, um, now we're gonna do highlight. So I have this highlight palette from uh, Sarcastic Cosmetics, Black Owned. Shout out to Shana. Um, I feel like this one, I want. I was going for like a bronzy look, but this is my Old Faithful. This is a Juvia's Place palette. This I use for my eyebrows a lot. And then this one I use for highlight, love it for highlight. And every time I try to use something else, I like always end up going back to this one. But this, um, blush not this blush this bronzer right here quit playing it's kind of speaking to me so maybe we'll mix them like a nice bronzy summery look to go with my dress time then flew this morning okay yes this is this nice little bronzy look very very cute love to see it All right, you know what? I might even do like an inner corner moment, even though I tend to like touch my inner corners when I have makeup on, but let's see if I Oh, this is the brush for, and I'm gonna use, what email is that? Yeah. So, I'm gonna, how about this? We're just gonna fly through the rest of this look because we're finishing up. The look is looking, okay? Okay. <laughs> this very like colored lip liner i'm just gonna add it to my lip liner on like add it to my lips i should say to give this one to anastasia beverly hills lipstick to give one more dim dimension and y'all one of the biggest compliments is when i do my makeup myself And people think I got it done. So we'll see if I get that compliment today. But either way, she's cute. All right, now we're going to do our trilogy of setting sprays, child. Y'all, 
I'm in a rush, of course, but I'm happy to report I'm not late. Actually, I kind of like the way this little side bang thing ended up turning out inadvertently. So as you can see, the lining of the dress is very short. This split was basically up to like here. I ended up getting it tailored so that he could um, just close it up some for me because it rises when I walk. And again, y'all know I'm not scared of a little skin, a little leg, but the whole rising when I walk and now it's up in my coochie, I ain't got time. Um, <laughs> so this is cute. I don't typically do bright colors, especially, well, at summer weddings I do. But yeah, this is, whole outfit is actually from Fashion Nova. Um, this, I love this dress. It's very stretchy, very forgiving. Um, but yeah, the middle part goes up high and of course I have shorts under. So what I did is the underlining, I used some, uh, clothing tape and taped it to my shorts that I have on under here. So let's hope that goes well. But at least I know y'all not going to be all up in my coochie because this part is closed. <laughs> so yeah, y'all. The, what are the, I forgot call it. The niash is niashing. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, she's cute. Yes, and the girls are girling, okay? And I like this ruffle because it brings attention to the center of the dress, very cute. And of course, I'm gonna have my glasses with me. I don't play those games. The shoes are actually from Fashion Nova too. Earrings from Fashion Nova. The shoes I got these like a year ago for another wedding that I went to. Um, and the earrings are from Fashion Nova. Let me come up so y'all can see them. I got this necklace from Fashion Nova, but it's a little too cheapy to me, so. I decided not to wear it, but I have my arm candy. I love some arm candy. I think I'll put a little bit of highlighter on my chest before I go. Um, these bracelets are from Etsy. They came in a set and then the watch came separately. Very affordable. This whole thing, maybe less than $30 for all of them. And then this little wishbone looking thing is from Amazon. And I actually have an anklet on, but fun fact, I get my anklets from the beauty supply and they last me. Like the last anklet I had lasted me good maybe six to eight months. So she's cute. She's cute. And of course, I'm gonna have my portable fan. It's fully charged. Okay. I have my portable fan that's fully charged and my flats because i don't have these games to play actually before i head out let me grab my deodorant because it's the summer amen um but i like this amount of cleavage like it's a classy amount of cleavage not too much i wanted to i can't find my stuff like i have a little black sweater that i could throw over my shoulders i have a black scarf that i could throw over my shoulders because the ceremony is in a church but i literally can't find any of this so i guess the lord's gonna have to get my shoulders today <laughs> And this bag is from Call It Spring. I got it years ago at like a liquidation sale after their store in Kings Plaza. So she's feeling good. Mm -hmm. Alex is literally outside, so I'm gonna go. But love y'all. And I'll insert clips of the wedding that I can insert if I can. Other than that, love you guys. And thank y'all so much for walking me. Let's just let's give it a moment for the dress. A moment for the dress. And love you. Bye. Mwah. For the truth, I look better under you. I can lose when I'm with you.